Aloha and welcome to this screencast, Anatomy of a Play Application, or uh, otherwise, I guess, um, guided tour walkthrough of the Activator UI. I'm going to show you a couple things here. Um, I'm in the ICS Play Bootstrap uh, directory, okay, and what I'm going to do is uh, invoke Activator, but I'm going to invoke the user interface with the UI command. And um, what's that, what that is going to do is bring up in our browser, as you can see, this kind of graphical UI for uh, playing around with applications. Um, it's, you know, kind of neat. Um, you'll use it, I think, I, I think as it gets more um, um, sophisticated, it'll probably have more and more relevance. Right now, um, it's mostly good for enabling one to easily step through an application. Um, and when you're using templates, they've got this kind of ingenious way that you can document a template um, system that you've developed using Play so that you can use this UI to step through the various components of your, your template and show what's going on. So if you want to, for example, learn how to use Akka with Play, you can download the Akka, one of the Akka templates um, from Activator and then display it in the UI and it comes with kind of guided tour documentation for that template that the author of the template has written. So that's kind of cool. And in this case what we're doing is we're just going to use this as a way of stepping through the ICS Play Bootstrap application because I want you guys to kind of see how it, how it all works. Um, so we'll go through this tutorial, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, step by step. Okay, so let's run the application. Let's, let's see if this actually works. Okay, and what you can see, I don't know why this happens, but you know, pretty much every time you try to do this, it's going to say this application is already running or delete the uh, running underscore PID file. Now, there's no good reason why, um, you know, all of a sudden there's this running PID file that has to be deleted in order for this to work. But what I've discovered is, in fact, it creates one of these things and then sees it and doesn't want to run. So you've got to delete it once. And then if you do restart or start, all of a sudden you're going to see things work the way they're supposed to. And then we can go to localhost 9000. And here is our running application. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a nice thing other than this kind of silliness with having to um, delete that PID. But that's how that run. Then we're going to go to here. Um, and this is where the tutorial, I think, gets a little nicer is because it steps you through the kind of the basic skeletal structure of a play application. Um, and the first thing is that web requests are handled by actions. Actions pr process each request, perform any work that's needed, and return a result. Okay, so you can read through all this. But what's nice is that you can click on these links and essentially see, you know, the code for this particular template. And as you can see, we've got two uh, actions associated with... Um, you know, this particular application, one for the uh, rendering the index page and one for rendering this page one page. So in essence, um, at, when you first start developing play applications, what you should think of is that every time you add a new page, you want to have a new action or, you know, controller for that page. So there's going to be kind of a one-to-one -one correspondence in terms of the methods here and the pages that you have. As you get more sophisticated, that rule isn't going to hold anymore. But as a first approximation when you're first getting started, definitely just think of it this way, that each you're going to have one of these things, it's going to render each of the pages. Okay, so let's go back um, to the tutorial. Um, and in fact, you can click here to learn more about actions, controllers, and results. So that's, you know, I would definitely read through this um, if you haven't read through it already. Um, okay, the next thing is the routes file which is how you, uh, you know, map between incoming HTTP requests and actions. And that's defined in the routes file. So here's the example of the routes file from um, the ICS Play Bootstrap. And you can see we have a route for each page, plus this other one, which is for assets, which we'll get to later. Don't worry about that right now. But basically what you want to do right now is make sure that when you define a new page, you are going to get a, um, you're going to have one uh, routing for each page, okay? Um, and then uh, if we go back here, 
Okay. They also have a link to HTTP routing, you know, the, the, the documentation for HTTP routing in general. Again, look through this. Very, very useful to read through that. Then we get to the templates, uh, which is our views. And uh, this uses Twirl, okay, which is basically a Scala, you know, object. And um, what you'll see if we, uh, if we look at um, the, uh, whoops, if we look at an index Scala.html, we see here is one of our templates for this specific page, the index page. And uh, it invokes another template, the main template, which is here. I don't know why these X's occur. That seems a little strange because this is a perfectly legal file. Um, and then we have the, uh, the, the template associated with our other page here. Okay. Um, and then we can go look through um, the actual Java doc. I'm sorry, the, the um, play documentation for templates. Okay, so the important thing to note is that if you're looking at this file, this page one.scala.html, that's going to actually produce a Java class called page one, which has a render method. Um, so if we go back to our application, okay, here's that invocation of the page one render method, um, and that class in views.html.page1 was implicitly generated as a result of compiling that twirl template, that, that page onescalahtml So that's, that's quite frankly just magic, okay, as far as a Java programmer is concerned. You know, how the heck does it do that? But somehow it's going to take this, um, whoops, it's going to take this particular file, index.scala.html, and there will be an index.java class in the views.html package somehow created from that with the render method. How it does it, who knows? Just, you know, it's magic to us. We don't care as long as it, as long as it actually does it. Static assets, um, this lives in the public folder. The only thing that we are concerned with in the public folder is the style sheet subfolder, which has a main.css. That's where we're going to put our customizations. Um, the other stuff you're not going to probably have to worry about too much for this class, um, but it's it's real obvious, and you can just read this section to learn more about it. Okay, and then we get to the build system. Um, build system is you, you know you have to know SBT. There's uh, you know this file which you're going to end up having to play around with a little bit, um, hopefully as little as possible because it's um, not fun to play around with this file, but that's um, uh, you know where you have to do it. You can learn more about the build system right here. Um, and um, as I said, I don't enjoy this build system that much. But you know, in normal cases, you you do activator new, activator run, activator test, activator clean. Um, just a f handful of commands which you run through activator, and then gets passed off to SBT to actually do you know the the heavy lifting. Runtime configuration is in this conf application.conf. We'll, we'll um, get more into this later on the semester when we start dealing with back end, um, the back end database. Not too big a deal. Um, it's kind of a standard con you know, configuration file. Um, so uh, you, know, you don't have to get too nervous about that. But you can learn more about it, again, um, by going to this page. Okay. Uh, the command line, you know, this talks about the activator commands. You can go here to learn, you know, what you can do. It's worth reading through. Um, and then, I don't know, more information. What is this? Oh, okay, so yeah, you can, you know, uh, go to Stack Overflow, for example, if you, if you want to. But hopefully you won't have to do that. Um, hopefully I'm the only one that has to be going to Stack Overflow for, for this class. Okay, so there is the skeletal structure of a play application. Um, you're going to have to think about the uh, when you add new pages and so forth, you're going to have to provide a new action or you know modify your controllers. You're going to have to update your routing. You're going to have to create a new template. Okay, those are kind of the three things. And it doesn't talk about testing in here, which is um, you know a little frustrating because you do have that test folder with the tests in it, and that's also something you'll need to do. All right.